Greetings, and welcome to episode 59. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the winding path. That is to say, the spiritual path, but how it's not a straight line. Uh, I think you'll like this one. It's going to get very interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. It's going to answer, hopefully, for you a bunch of questions, because these are questions that I have and have had, and... Uh, if you let life just play out, they sometimes answer themselves, these questions. And sometimes they don't. Sometimes you need advice. This isn't meant to be advice. This is just to let you know that you're not the only one that goes through the winding path process. All right. So if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the winding path. What does that mean, the winding path? Well, in our journey, we, 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 we first, you know, the baby steps. You, you want to get started. And you find your starting point, whichever it is. I'm not going to ask you or judge you for what your starting point is. Everyone starts at a different point, from a different point of view even. But the goal is shared. Everyone's headed for the same place. Hopefully. Because eventually we all end up at the same place anyway. But hopefully the goal, the shared goal, is to achieve enlightenment. Oneness, togetherness, all that. <clears throat> it's obviously a slow process. Or we'd probably all already be there by now. But we're not. <laughs> and what, what, this is what I mean by winding road, because technically it is a straight shot from here to there. But what happens is it's more along the lines that you find something that branches off from the main path because it's something you want to learn, something you feel will be beneficial to your path, to your journey. But I've noticed some things, once you follow that that branching path, <clears throat> it's like taking the, the fork in the road. It sometimes doesn't lead anywhere beneficial. But you wouldn't have known that had you not gone that way. So sometimes going that way is just to find out that, oh, okay, it was pointless. And sometimes I really really hate doing that because you, you've wasted X amount of time looking into studying this thing that didn't lead anywhere <clears throat> and I guess I'm making this video not because of the times where I figured it out but because of the times that I didn't and what I mean by figure it out isn't necessarily that it leads nowhere but I'm to the point where I want to know if it's going to lead somewhere before I decide to go down that path because I don't want to waste my time because if it's not going to be beneficial I mean there's no point in learning something that's not going to help you at all because it is po it, it, and it is possible to learn something that actually sets you back because it creates a paradox like but if this then how is this there's no such thing as an unsolvable paradox granted but then that's extra time you spent learning this new thing and now you have to spend extra time trying to reconcile between what you already learned and this new thing you've learned and sometimes reconciling those differences is very difficult <coughs> like on my path I've learned more about myself and my ancestors. But I can't say that everything I learned was beneficial in any way, shape, or form. And in some senses, it, it, they, I was presented with setbacks because now I'm put in the position to, to question 
not the validity of what I've learned, but to question, how do I put this? Not, not the validity of what I've learned, <clears throat> but my point of view. Question my own point of view. Am I viewing it wrong? Am I supposed to be seeing it from over here? And, and it could be argued that, well, you wouldn't be seeing it the way you're seeing it if you weren't supposed to see it that way, but that's not entirely true. How many times have you been helped to see something a certain way, and once you see it that way, ah, it clicks. Or how many times have you helped someone else to see things a certain way, and aha, it clicks for them. <clears throat> My question then becomes, do I continue down this side path and face this paradox, or do I avoid the paradox altogether? I mean, how? I mean, I I know I'm not the only one that experiences this. That you get to a point and you're like, wow, that, that only presents more problems. It doesn't answer any of my questions. And then it could be argued that maybe the new problems are part of the answer. Like, once you start to solve this new problem, you'll start to get the answers for the old question or your previous questions, which is entirely possible. I guess I'm more worried about wasting the time. I would really hate to go through the process of <clears throat> solving the paradox and having it lead absolutely nowhere. Or perhaps all the way back to where I was in the first place, which was a com makes it a complete waste of time because I didn't need that at all. And it's not the same as knowing something and then hearing someone else speak on it. Preaching to the choir is, is essential, I found. I used to not want to watch videos that other people made if I already knew the subject matter. But then it occurred to me, because I took the time to watch, that just hearing it from somebody else's point of view helps to reinstill this information and that unique point of view you're getting actually adds to what you already know because there's some part you missed because you're looking at it from over here so you don't see what's on this side and likewise they're looking at it from over here they don't see what's over there so hearing it from their point of view they're gonna tell you what's over here whatever little bit you miss and maybe you're only getting just a small little bit from it but it still helps to reinforce long-held beliefs I mean it I don't know about you but to me it feels good to come in contact with others that hold the similar beliefs no matter how much different they are they're similar that's the that's the point they're similar And as those beliefs become reinforced, and with this new perspective of the same idea you already held, you can move forward. There's it's just like there's just a little bit missing, and don't discount your own point of view just because maybe you're new to it or maybe uh, you're just shy. Whoa, who who could learn anything from me? you never know because I'm not standing where you're standing I don't see it your way so that means there's gonna be something that you have to offer even if it's tiny just remember every drop raises the ocean so you can be helpful and or beneficial in some way but <clears throat> I'm trying to speak more to when we're and this happens, I know this happens a lot. It happens a lot to me. And I can only assume for the rest of you it happens. It happens. I can't speak to how frequently or infrequently it happens. But it happens where you, you hit a flat spot. 
everybody plateaus. You you get this learning curve and it just, yeah, and you're just learning and you're just devouring information and then all of a sudden you plateau. And it's like nothing new happens. You don't learn anything, no new experiences. So you go looking for something new to learn. You go looking for new experiences and then you find teachings. I'm not going to say you disagree with them. Let's say that they hit your perspective as truth. You've never heard this before. Or maybe it's along the same lines of the path you were on in the first place, but it's different. It's a different take on it. Like some people have the exact same take, but they add religion in. Or some people have the exact same take, but they add cultural diversity in or racial diversity in. And I'm not trying to speak to racism, but there's an air of our people. <laughs> and so you come across this information. Do you follow it? Because I'm 100% against cultural and racial separation. I'm all about diversity. I do not care for racism or culturalism or nationalism in that sense in the in 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 the sense of being bigoted or 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 what's the other word we'll just say bigoted or biased culturally racially or nationally i mean I have no problem learning the cultures of others. I have no problem with any other race. But then some of these lines of thought say one way or another, our people. And they don't come right out and say, oh, some of them actually do come right out and say, our people. And then everything I've learned has been to remove the us and them argument. And if you follow that line of thought, it throws you into that battle again. The us and them. Us against them. We got to do. They got to do. And that to me speaks to culturalism or racism or some kind of bias that the spiritual, the particular path I'm on has led me away from being biased in one direction or the other. I guess you could say I'm biased toward diversity. Cultural diversity, racial diversity, national diversity. I would have no problem living somewhere else. I have no problem with someone coming here to live. It's good to learn new things. You can, If you can't afford to travel, let the mountain come to Mohammed. Let let these people come and move here. And then go, now that they're oh, two or three blocks away, now go talk to them. Hey, I, I would like to discuss your culture, if that's all right with you. You know, I would like to see, uh, discuss your beliefs. I would like to just, just to hear about your culture. But these are some of the things you, you encounter, or I encounter, or have encountered on my winding road. And it just, a part of me feels compelled to follow that line of thought. I want to see everything this has to offer, but I don't want to get sucked into being biased, racially, culturally biased. I just, I, I, and it's almost assumed that well if you're if you're if you're if you want this information this is the way you got to look at it and sometimes the information is important enough that i would deal with that attitude to to listen or read whatever information there is because it is it's that important there's a lot of side paths that that lead around what I would consider a racist. There's a lot of that information that it becomes, it is valuable, it's usable information. Once that bias has been removed, because, let's face it, I have a back scratcher. 
I could tell a room full of people that only one race of people can use this back scratch. But that doesn't make it true. But likewise, that doesn't invalidate the back scratcher. I mean, the back scratcher, if you were looking for a back scratcher, there's a back scratcher. So once you remove the perspective, you still have your back scratcher. And if you were looking for a back scratcher, hey, there it is. So the, the information is valid. You're just removing that point of view from it. And see, and in discussing this with you, I have answered my own question. And all the better for it. <laughs> but that's an only one of the, of, the, of the problems. Because on the path, one gets sidetracked by other things, like uh, the future of things. What's going to happen in the future? Everyone's going on about the one world government and this and that. And that's down the road. If you're focused on down the road, any teacher will tell you, if you're focused on down the road, you're not here in this moment learning what you need to be learning. Because remember, <clears throat> I'm not a pacifist by any means. But if you are so intent on being right that you've pushed off the path, to go prove your right, you're no better than the people that are out there already trying to prove their right that are maybe doing something you don't agree with. I'm not afraid of a negative outcome in any sphere of involvement because I'm not going to lend my power to it. So if you're off on one of those side, strips, uh, side streets, come back. Stop lending your power to it. Stop being afraid of it. That's what they want. They want you to be afraid of it so you can help them draw it down because it's always on your mind, always on your mind. It's going to happen. What do we do? It's not going to happen because I don't want it to happen. And if it does happen, I'll defend myself within that sphere of involvement. I'm not to that sphere of involvement. In other words, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We haven't come to that bridge yet. The path winds. I'm probably like four feet away from the bridge, but the path does this, so who knows? <laughs> it's like Candyland. <laughs> uh, but seriously, a new perspective, new information, don't get sucked into taking on someone else's bias along with their information. I don't care how valid their information is because if this person is biased in any way, shape, or form, like racist or culturalist or whatever their bias, they're missing part of a perspective there's something they're not seeing and granted it could be argued that perhaps there's something I'm not seeing maybe I'm supposed to be racist but I strongly doubt that anybody that's on this path a path of spirit toward enlightenment nobody that's on that path can say I'm supposed to be racist I'm supposed to be bigoted I'm supposed to uh, hold certain people out. I'm supposed to hold in my heart a, a sense of us and them. Because every path I've ever heard of says there is no us and them. There's only us. No matter the race, creed, color, nationality, spiritual beliefs, no matter what they're doing right this second, there is no us and them. Only us. But as the path winds, I mean, some information is just interesting and has nothing to do with the path at all. And it's just interesting, trivial tidbits to have, I guess, because I've done that, gone down, oh, that, that looks interesting. And it is. It is 100% interesting. Has absolutely no bearing on my spiritual journey, but it's interesting. 
and to me it's worth it. Like, had this life to do over, I would be a professor, uh, pardon me, a professor of anthropology. It could be argued that that has absolutely nothing to do with the path, and it doesn't, until you discover that some of the architectures used in ancient times were based on sacred geometry. Sacred geometry, the reason why it's called sacred, is because they knew what math really was and how it connected to everything. That's part of the journey. That's like advanced spirituality. <laughs> But if you didn't take the time to go and look at those cool buildings, you would have never figured that out. So sometimes you get something. More often than not, <clears throat> I'm going to say two-thirds of the time when I go on a side trip, it's just really interesting information. But I don't really get anything out of it. Sometimes the information presented, I'm completely turned off to. And this, this fits into the two-thirds. Sometimes the information is, is, is it's poisoned. It's poisoned with things like racism, bigotry, culturalism, nationalism. You got to view it this way, and you just like I can't. There's a certain level. Like if it's if it's if the racism or or bigotry is is intimated, like if they don't come out and say it, but you you get that feeling then I can still stomach it enough to get the information. But if they just come out and say it, yeah, I'm I'm done. Moving along. And I'm not just talking about... Because uh, obviously I'm black. I'm not just talking about black teachers. I'm also talking about there are white teachers out there that they don't come out and say they're not talking to someone of my nationality. <laughs> but you get that feeling. But sometimes the information is in either important enough or interesting enough to keep me watching anyway. And when it's someone of my own nationality, so if it's an, another black person teaching, but they come off with the air of just us, or come right out and say just us, yeah, I'm done. I won't even go down that path. I don't want to hear what they have to say. Because I've done that before. Listen to the whole spiel and you muscle through the, the whole... And they every five minutes it seems like they got to make sure you remember that it's only for us. It's only for us. It's not for them. It's only for us. Every few minutes they got to remind you. So, and just when you get to the end, I just, I couldn't hold on to anything they said because of the us, 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 us. And when they say us, they don't mean us as everyone on the planet is us. They mean us, this select group is us. There's no, the select groups went out the window decades ago, possibly even centuries ago. It's no longer us as a small group. It's us as a whole planet. Technically, it's always been us as a whole planet. Somebody thought it would be clever to divide us all to keep us fighting each other. Clever, but obviously not clever enough because there's enough of us out there that can see past cultural differences, racial differences, even differences of point of view and opinion. We can see past these things to get and give our information. Not sure if that makes us better or worse. But the winding path will take you around these people. It'll take you to... Uh, my favorite is information that is just wrong. <laughs> when a non-spiritual person tries to delve into spiritual matters and then tries to explain everything as it is mundane and has absolutely nothing to do with spirituality whatsoever. That just, it makes me giggle. It's like, you don't even know what you're talking about. You have no idea what you have in your hands right there. <laughs> that also I can't watch because I can't get through, I 
I can't, I can't get through it. I can't. <laughs> it, it's like if any of you know what who Christopher Hitchens is, and I have a lot of respect for Christopher Hitchens. He is probably the most important atheist that ever existed because he is such a fatal pragmatist he's so pragmatic that I don't know how to explain it he's hard not to listen to he's a very good speaker he has a lot of he he makes more good points than some of the best spiritual teachers I've ever met didn't he didn't sway my vote at all but he does make you think and that is all he was trying to do <laughs> so in that sense he was good at what he did but I could go down his path and learn his information because it was very well presented information but on the same token we weren't put here to be pragmatic we weren't put here to just think with our left brain he he was of the mind seeing is believing but none of this any holy book will tell you it's not seeing is believing it's believing is seeing and you can fit that to any sphere of involvement and even on the mundane you look at this girl or guy depending on who you are you think she's gorgeous Until you know she likes you, you don't know that she likes you. And I don't know, when I was younger and, and was still on the market, I'm married now, but when I was still on the market, if I couldn't tell a girl liked me, it was more difficult to approach her to start a dialogue with that female. Seeing is believing. Right? In that instance, seeing is believing. You're not going to believe she likes you until you see it. Now, how about someone that you just, you don't even put on your list as possibilities. They're just, to you, they're just that attractive, so you don't even, so you just go about your business, and someone comes up to you and says, so-and-so has a crush on you <sighs> yeah right and you don't see it even if she walks right up to you and talks to you you don't see it why because believing is seeing if you don't believe she likes you or could possibly like you you're not gonna see it so Believing is seeing, even on a mundane level. Why would that not work as above, so below? Why would that not work on every level? And there are exceptions to every rule, granted. But why would that not work on every level? Do you understand? <laughs> But to get back on point, I could, res I could respect Christopher Hitchens. He didn't come off as racist. He didn't say this information is for select few us and not them. He was like, this information needs to get out. And to an extent, his information was valid. You cannot, like when he says you cannot take the Bible or any holy book as it is written. Or as it is perceived by most people. And there, there is truth in that, in that statement. But I couldn't take everything. But going down that path was very interesting. Whether I learned anything I needed or not, which I didn't, was irrelevant. It was interesting enough to go down that path. And I didn't feel... I had lost anything by going, taking the time to, to explore that 
that that speaker. I mean, I didn't just watch one video. I, I've watched several videos of of, of his lectures and and uh, debates. He's very good at debating, and he's a very good speaker. Uh, the world is a little bit worse off for his passing. And he's an atheist. He does not believe as I believe at all in the slightest little bit. He would probably spend his time, if, I, if, if we were to meet one another, he would probably spend the whole time trying to convert me to atheism. <laughs> but the, that being beyond the point, that was a side path that I only went down because it seemed interesting to me, and it was. So it, it paid off. So maybe the payoff isn't always learning something new. Maybe the, the, the payoff is just seeing somebody else's point of view and seeing that that point of view is equally as valid. Maybe that's all it is. I mean, from his point of view, and then I can't say I didn't learn anything. I can only say that for as little as I gleaned from him, I can only say I followed that path because it was the information was interesting to me. And for those of you who don't know who Christopher Hitchens is, look him up, Google him. He's a very interesting person. He's a very good speaker. I mean, even if you don't agree with what he says, it's interesting enough to follow where he's going. It, it just is. Just to see his point of view. He's like the atheist Jesus, I guess. <laughs> he would probably giggle at me saying that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, anyway. We're getting on to the 30-minute mark. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut this one down. I feel really good about this one. I could have added more to it. I mean, I was getting very passionate about the path and the winding road and the different avenues of information. Oh, but if, if you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. You can favorite it if you want. Uh, please leave comments down below as it is supposed to be a discussion. I want to know what you think. I want to know your point of view on this. And if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, then please click the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there. <laughs>